Good morning all. The pick tutorials and another follow-up to part one. I mean it was inevitable really. Part one raised a lot of issues and these follow-ups are to address those issues. So that guy, that's his YouTube username, that guy has been having a few problems with the pick kit three so I thought I'd get out my pick kit three. Uh, clone one there, clone pick kit two. Genuine microchip pit kit three, genuine microchip pit kit two. So uh, let's put the pit kit three through its paces and see what the problems are. I'm also having problems with this, but I do have a solution. Uh, just also to add that the pit kit three is kind of known for having more problems than the pit kit two. This has been going on for several years. I seem to remember Dave Jones throwing one of these things across the room a little while back. So with the clone pit kit 3 connected to my demo board and the frequency counter there just to uh, make sure that this thing is actually running, let's give this thing a try. Right, so I'm in MP Lab IDE V8.92. Now if I select uh, Programmer, Select Programmer and pit kit 3, we get um, a window comes up and I've got a voltage caution which is saying uh, be careful because if you put 5 volts on a 3.3 .3 volt device you'll blow it up. Okay let's go with that and it says pit kit 3 connected and it says you must connect to a target device to use pit kit 3. Now up here these controls are all greyed out including this last one which is to switch the programmer target power on and off. In other words, to power the little uh, development board, the little demo PCB. But if you go to programmer settings and you get this panel comes up and in the power tab I can power the target circuit from pit kit 3. If I apply that the warning comes up again and this keeps coming up. Warning! Selecting 5 volt device when a 3.3 .3 device is connected can damage the device. Okay, we're happy with that. Uh, let's see if that... And now I'm getting error, failed to get device ID. So yes, I'm getting all sorts of errors. Now, as I say, I do have a solution to this. So um, I'm not too concerned at the moment. But what I thought I'd do is try the genuine microchip pick kit 3 to see whether that's any more reliable than the clone. In other words, have I by suggesting you buy this clone pit kit 3, have I wasted your money? Well let's find out. Hmm, on this genuine one the uh, USB socket plug thing is extremely tight. That's a very tight fit. But despite that uh, rather tight socket, the genuine pit kit 3 does seem to be working. It got the device ID so it read a number out of the chip. It's all zero, zero binary. So I'm not quite sure about that, but um, it did a read and it even did a program. And I simply cannot program using the PIT kit 3, the clone one, uh, on this IDE at all. So yes, the genuine PIT kit 3 does seem to be better than the clone uh, when used with this IDE. Oops. But I'm not saying that you have to uh, spend money on a genuine microchip pit kit 3. I think we can uh, press on with the clone one. But let me just show you a few of the problems I was having with this in terms of programming the chip. So back with the clone pit kit 3 and one of the problems I'm having is uh, it can't even get the device ID. Now if you read all the forums and messages uh, this was happening with the genuine pit kit 3 and some people say if you reduce this voltage to 4.875 volts and click apply, get the warning message again, um, and we try a read, it does actually manage to do a read. So uh, that little tweak is successful for doing a read and getting the device ID, but it's a bit nasty, isn't it, having to adjust this voltage. Well, let's try a program programming. Oh, that's actually worked this time. Right, let me stick this back to uh, 5 volts. Apply that. Warning message again. Let's try programming. Programming. And it says 
failed to get device ID. Now I was getting a slightly different message to that. Uh, let me just continue playing with this to see if I can get that message in case it's the same message that you're getting. Well, I can't get the exact error I was having yesterday, or was it the day before? I can't remember. It's all a bit of a blur. Um, but I am still getting failed to get device ID, programming failed. If this thing is at 5 volts, it seems to work if you put it down to 4.875 volts. But this is all a bit dodgy, isn't it? Uh, that's set to 5 volts. If you look at status and see the measured voltage, it's only 4.75 volts. And in fact, I put my DVM on the demo board and it was measuring only about 4.75 volts and I can't get that to go any higher and that maybe is something to do with the USB voltage I don't know but it's all a bit hit and miss I wanted a much better solution so let's go to that now and uh, it's this it's the PitKit 3 programmer standalone application uh, now be very careful with this if you look at the about um, this one is version 3.10. There is another one, which is an older one, called version 1.0, I think it is. That one just doesn't seem to work on my Windows 10. It just seems to crash. This one does crash when you try and close it, but only when you try and quit it. So that's not really a major issue. Now, it's saying the PitKit 3 is in MP Lab mode, which it is because we just used it with MP Lab. Um, you have to go to Tools and download PitKit operating system. And then it brings up um, a window saying, where is this PitKit operating system? And it's this, it's a hex file, pk 3 osv 5 hex So we'll select that. And it says it's downloading the PitKit 3 bootloader. And so what it's doing is it's rewriting the firmware. Oh, not responding, I'm sure that will come back in a minute. It's rewriting the firmware into the PitKit 3. Yeah, I'm getting some uh, bing bong noises with USB going up and down. Uh, so that this thing has its own standalone operating system in the PitKit 3. That seems to have worked. PitKit 3 connected. ID is default PK3. That's the ID you get with the clones because the clones obviously don't have serial numbers in them. In, in them. Pick device found. This does seem to program the uh, the pick much more reliably. And uh, so where do you get this? Well, um, it's on the microchip.com website, development tools, downloads, archive. I'll put the link to this um, in the description below. But let's just scroll through this. We've got MPLAB X, we've got MPLAB IDE. This is the old MPLAB 8 which I'm using for this uh, tutorial series. Carry on going, carry on going. And we've got right here, PitKit 3. Uh, we've got the standalone programmer app v1.0. I can't get that one to work. It keeps crashing. What you want is this one, PitKit 3 programmer app and scripting tool v3.10. Now, if you're thinking, well, this is a bit of a Bodge. Why am I having to use two programs to uh, program my chip? Well, actually, this programmer, this standalone programmer app, is really good. And it has one feature which the IDE in itself doesn't have. And that is that if you click this auto import hex and write device, and I'm using this config hex here, which uh, is the hex file that came from my uh, just setting up the config bits. Here we are, writing device, program memory. Programming was set successful, waiting for a file update. So if I click on my source file, and uh, now can I just do a quick build? Will it see that it uh, has changed, or will it think it's the same one? Let's see what uh, that did. Yes, and it's it's seen that the hex file has been updated, and this app just simply saw that, grabbed the new hex file, and reprogram the chip without me having to do anything. So this is pretty good. It can be even more productive than this IDE just on its own. Um, it's also got this rather neat uh, oscillator calibration mechanism, which you can get to quite easily. I've set mine to 34 uh, because I think as it gets warmer and warmer, um, I need to use a higher value. But you just click on Tools, OSC, Cal, Set Manually. You get 
this little window if I can move it. No, I don't seem to be able to move it. But you type your number in here. You have to include the opcode, the 34 bit. So let's take mine up to, I don't know, 38. We now know that the least two significant bits are not used. If I say set, it will program the device, completely erases the program memory, but it sets the OSC cal. Um, it says it's done it. Let's have a look at the last location in memory. And yes, there it is, 3438 in location 3FF. So it's done it. This is a really nice, easy to use standalone programmer application. And you can still get it from Microsoft's uh, Microchip's website. Now, just one thing to bear in mind, if you want to take the uh, programmer, the PitKit 3, back to normal MP lab mode, you must go to tools and say revert to MP lab mode. If you don't do that, you'll plug the PitKit 3 into MP lab and it just won't work. So revert to MP lab mode kind of removes this uh, PitKit operating system, the operating system that's designed to work with this standalone app. So uh, use the standalone app, put the operating system in your PitKit 3. But if you tire of this app and you don't want to use it anymore, revert to MP lab mode. And uh, just a quick thing on the only bug I can find in this standalone programmer, um, which is when you try and close it. If you close it, it comes up with this unhandled exception and you have to quit and then quit again. And then it says PitKit 2 has stopped working. PitKit 2? What's it talking about? There's obviously some underlying code in this, which has been left as PitKit 2. It's all very bizarre, but if you just hit close, it all goes away fine. And uh, this is all documented. Uh, Dave Jones had some problems closing that standalone app uh, back at the beginning of 2016. I'll put a link to a couple of Dave Jones videos in the description. If you want to watch those and watch all the problems he was having, be my guest. So, uh, the PitKit 3 clone version, if I use MPLAB IDE 8.92 and that version 3.1 standalone app, where you put the special firmware in here and use the standalone app to drive it, I am successfully now programming my chip from the PitKit 3. So if you've gone for the PitKit 3 option, yes, it's slightly more complicated, but you do get those advantages that the standalone app um, has that neat auto program feature every time you re uh, reassemble your source code. And you've got this uh, mechanism for changing the oscillator calibration and stuff like that. So this is a perfectly workable system. The PitKit 3 uh, works now fine. And uh, just to prove that point, when I do part two of the PitKit tutorials, where we're going to flash an LED, the LED blinky program, I'll use the PitKit 3. And of course, if any other issues crop up uh, while I'm doing that, then I'll have to address those in one of these follow-up tutorial parts. But uh, for the moment, I think uh, we can now proceed with these PitKit tutorials. I've successfully uh, put a lid on the can of worms that I appear to have opened here. But uh, yeah, not a problem. I'm uh, quite happy. We're going to press on and I will alternately use the PitKit 2 and the PitKit 3 clones in both cases. I'm not going to use the genuine ones because I want this project to be cheap for everyone who's following along. So uh, yes, for the moment, that's it. Uh, part two, as I say, will be LED blinky. But for now, cheerio.